India and Russia share one of the world's longest and strongest defense relationships, stretching back to the Cold War. From tanks and submarines to fighter aircraft like the MiG-21 and Su-30 MKI, Russia has been a primary supplier of India's military hardware. Given this deep bond, a natural question arises. Why doesn't India look to Russia for help in building a domestic jet engine, especially when India has been struggling to master this technology? The answer lies in a mix of technology limitations, geopolitical realities, industrial priorities, and India's long-term strategic vision. While Russia has produced some successful jet engines, such as the AL-31F, used in the Su-27 family, including India's Su-30 MKI, its record with modern high-performance engines is mixed. The Saturn AL-41F1, used in the Su-57 stealth fighter, and the planned Isdelier 30 engines are still in development stages and face delays. Russian engines are often criticized for shorter lifespans, higher maintenance costs, and fuel inefficiency compared to Western counterparts like those from GE, Rolls-Royce, or Safran. India already operates Russian engines, but struggles with their sustainment. For example, the AL-31F engines of the Su-30 MKI fleet require frequent overhauls and spares, creating logistical headaches. Given these issues, India is cautious about deepening reliance on Russia for next-generation engine technology. Partnering with Russia might result in engines that meet present needs, but fall short of the performance standards India aspires to achieve for future fighters like the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. One of India's top goals is to achieve self-reliance in critical defense technologies. While Russia has been generous in many areas, such as sharing designs for BrahMos missiles and assisting in nuclear submarine programs, jet engines are different. Jet engine design is considered one of the most guarded defense technologies in the world. Even close allies hesitate to part with their crown jewels. Russia has historically been reluctant to share the core technologies of turbine blades, single crystal alloys, and thermal coatings, areas where India has the most gaps. India has learned from past experiences, such as dependence on Russia for spare parts during conflicts, that excessive reliance can become a vulnerability. Thus, while Russia might supply engines, it is unlikely to allow India to truly co-develop them at the level India wants. Over the last two decades, India has diversified its defense partnerships. The United States, France, and the UK have all emerged as strong players in India's defense sector. GE Aviation is already working with India to co-produce the F-414 engine for the Tejas MK-2 fighter. Safran, France, has expressed willingness to collaborate on next-gen engine technologies for AMCA, offering deeper transfer of technology than Russia typically provides. Rolls-Royce, UK, has also shown interest in joint engine development with India. These Western firms bring not just advanced technology, but also global supply chains, higher efficiency, and longer engine life. Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine has weakened its position as a reliable defense partner. Western sanctions have restricted Russia's access to high-end components like semiconductors and metallurgy inputs, which are essential for advanced engine development. Russia's defense industry is overstretched, focused primarily on replenishing its own losses in Ukraine. This leaves little bandwidth for collaborative, long-term projects like co-developing an engine with India. India's defense doctrine under Atmanir Barbarat, self-reliant India, emphasizes indigenous production of critical technologies. Jet engines sit at the top of this list. The Kaveri engine project, though unsuccessful in powering fighter jets, gave India valuable experience in materials design and testing. Partnering with Russia might only provide stopgap solutions rather than push India toward true mastery. Collaborating with Western companies offers a higher chance of absorbing cutting-edge processes while keeping pace with global advancements. In other words, India is thinking not just of immediate needs, but of the long-term ability to design, produce, and upgrade engines independently. India's experience with the Su-30 MKI illustrates the risks of over-dependence on Russia. While India assembles the aircraft domestically, many components, including engine parts, still come from Russia. During times of tension, like the 2022 Ukraine war, supply disruptions directly impact India's operational readiness. Learning from this, India is determined to reduce such dependency in future flagship programs like AMCA, which is why it looks westward rather than eastward for engines. Thank you for watching. If you found the video insightful, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.